Dr. Stocks, thanks uh, for joining us. Our topic is the dangers of insufficient sleep. And I guess the question that I'd ask you, is it true that uh, we're getting less sleep and how much sleep is the average person now getting? Well, ever since uh, Thomas uh, Edison inv inv invented the light bulb, uh, the average Western civilization, Europe, US individual nowadays is getting somewhere uh, around six hours sleep. Uh, between five and a half and six and a half hours a night. Is that too little? Uh, for, for most all of us, that's way too little. We probably would be much happier, much more rested if we were getting somewhere close to seven, seven and a half hours on average. You may have touched on this, but elaborate on it a little bit. Why has sleep deprivation become such an epidemic? It has to do with technology. Uh, back before uh, the light bulb was invented, uh, People basically read for a little while by candlelight that doesn't usually keep, that's not enough light to keep you reading for too, too long unless you're Abraham Lincoln. And as a result, the, the average person went to bed sometime soon after it became dark. Uh, their bodies wanted to go to sleep. There wasn't a whole lot to do in the evening time, so people went to bed. Uh, then other than farmers or those who needed to get up to milk cows uh, very early in the morning, the average person would sleep a, a total of eight to nine hours most nights. Well, doctor, acknowledging that we're probably not getting enough sleep, what health problems does not sleeping enough cause? Well, first, we wake, when we don't get enough sleep, we tend to wake up tired. All of us have had uh, the experience of, uh, of a single bad night of sleep and waking up the next day, not only being tired, but being cranky. We see it in our kids, it's true in us as well. Uh, so there's a, 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 just a personal, uh, general well-being uh, about being tired. Uh, the consequence of, of not getting good sleep is that we don't function as well mentally or physically. Athletes know they need to get a good night's sleep before they have a world record performance. Uh, staying up all night partying does not make uh, uh, for a, a successful athletic career. It doesn't do much good for a student or a businessman who needs to remember things during the daytime either. So there are, there are a lot of consequences of a bad night's sleep. Uh, some of them are emotional, some of them are just performance issues. Uh, truth is, is that we're also prone to having accidents when we are tired during the daytime. I think a nice segue, how are we affected at work by insufficient sleep? Well, when we're really tired, uh, our, our brains are right on the edge of sleep all the time. We have what we call micro sleeps, where if you actually looked at the brain waves, you'd see little bursts of sleep going on all the time. The problem with that is, is that it is very difficult uh, for us to remember things when we're in that state. So we have to be extra careful about writing down things. Somebody tells us something, it's in one ear, out the other, which is not very good if you're in the classroom, and it's not very good if you're a businessman trying to remember your client's name, uh, let alone the order that he just gave you. So how much sleep do we need in order to stay healthy? Well, if you define health as uh, the absence of catastrophe, uh, most of us manage to muddle through uh, from day to day, uh, change, you know, shortchanging ourselves a little bit on sleep. But in order to be optimal at our best functioning mentally and physically, most of us really need somewhere uh, between seven and eight hours of sleep a night. Now, young adults probably need closer to nine hours of sleep. Uh, but, but few young adults actually allow themselves that luxury. Let me throw one at you here that you, that you may not know the answer to, or you may not, then again you may. Not sleeping enough, are the effects cumulative? Is there a cumulative effect to being sleep deprived? Well, when we have poor quality sleep chronically, it tends to result one in weight gain. And when we gain weight over years and years, that tends to increase our blood pressure, we tend to be more likely to have diabetes, our cholesterol goes up. Ultimately, not sleep can uh, result in uh, more strokes, more heart attacks, and not living as long as one would otherwise hope to. And what's the connection between sleep and weight gain? 
it has to do with hormones that are suppressed during normal sleep. But when we don't get normal sleep, those hormones make us hungrier. Hmm. A lot of us actually uh, also have bad habits. When we wake up in the middle of the night, we raid the refrigerator, uh, and uh, that extra bite of ice cream uh, in the middle of the night or a sandwich or whatever it is adds up over, over the decades. What are the most common myths about sleep? Probably the most common myth is the, the, the idea that it doesn't matter what happens Monday through Friday, I can always catch up on the weekend. And it is true that if we let ourselves sleep in on Saturday and Sunday, that we can catch up a little bit in terms of the cumulative, what we call sleep debt, the amount of sleep that we owe our bodies and our brains. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, is that when you go from a, a sleep schedule on a weekend that's very different from the sleep schedule uh, on the weekday, ultimately our body clocks are throw, thrown off kilter and uh, it, it really does not result in as successful or restful sleep as we would have liked. It seems like everybody, and everybody's one of those broad words, but a lot of people are taking sleeping aids. The most common one you uh, hear about is Ambien. It seems like people are taking that. Is that okay? No. Okay. It, it's not that Ambien is a dangerous drug. It certainly had uh, some bad press with some, uh, uh, some incidents that have made the news over the last 10, 15 years. But in general, most of the modern sleeping pills are, are generally safe drugs. Uh, we don't have the same kind of worries as we used to have with drugs such as the barbiturates, which uh, you know, helped to end Marilyn Monroe's life and, and were just exceedingly dangerous drugs. Modern sleeping pills are generally safe. The problem is, is that it's an illusion to think that a sleeping pill is a substitute for normal healthy sleeping habits. It doesn't really work. What about people that have just a hard time going to sleep and staying asleep? And this is personal to me. My wife, any little thing will wake her up. And then when it happens, she can't go back to sleep. What's, what's going on? Well, one of the things that happens to us uh, as we get older, and I'm not, I'm not hinting that your wife's older. Oh, she's not getting older. Okay. <laughs> All the rest of us are, but she's not, yeah. Uh, one of the things that changes as we get older is that uh, whereas in young, young people, a huge percentage of the night is spent in deep sleep. That's the sleep when uh, we had children that were seven years old, they fell asleep and we had to throw them over our shoulder to carry them off to bed. Nothing on this earth was gonna wake mm -hmm. them up. We dressed them or undressed them to get to bed. Um, as we get older, our, the, the patterns of our, sh of our sleep change such that by the time we're about 65, we don't have any deep sleep at all. It's all dream sleep and light sleep. And unfortunately, in dream sleep and light sleep, it's very easy to disturb us. Some, our, our bed partner rolling over in the bed, the neighbor's dog barking, the air conditioner turning on or any of those health problems that start to bother us as we get older, stomach, arthritis, uh, you know, needing to go to the bathroom, all of those scenarios become more common as we age and the sleep that we get is more easily disturbed as we age. So it is, it is normal healthy sleep as we get older to experience uh, more awakenings at, at, at night. That does not make it poor sleep, it just makes it different sleep. For some people that's very frustrating and what they want is they want a pill to smooth over the, you know, the, the wake ups. It's not a good solution. Well what is the compensation for that or is there one? Well one is a certain um, acceptance of what, what, what is reality. Mm -hmm. uh, two, w we have to be even more careful about good sleep habits as we get older. Uh, when we're 20, we can stay awake all night one night, you know, party the next, sleep in on Saturday, and Monday we may need an extra cup of coffee, but, but we muddle through. You just don't get away with that when you're older. 
uh, when, when we're older and our sleep is more sensitive to disruption, what we need is, is a pattern of, of regularly exercising during the daytime, not late in the night. We need to avoid all caffeinated beverages, particularly uh, in the late afternoon and evening. We need to moderate our alcohol consumption in the evening so that we don't drink too, too much. And we need to go to bed at a regular time and wake up at a regular time, Monday through Sunday, every day. Those kinds of, of regular schedules and healthy sleep habits will promote as, as best a possible sleep as we can get. We also need to talk with our doctor occasionally when the medications we take are getting in the way. You use the word habit. Not getting enough sleep can and does become habitual. How do you break that bad habit? Well, uh, first off, I guess you have to realize that you're responsible for your own health and your own behaviors. Uh, you can't blame the bed partner. You can't blame the neighbor dog. Y you need to take charge of your own health and your own circumstances. Uh, be it your diet, be it your medications, when you see your doctor, uh, you need to take you know, charge of your own exercise program. Uh, you need to understand that you're responsible for getting a good night's sleep. It's not something you can find in a bottle. It is something you can find uh, in your own pocket, so to speak. Very well. Doctor, thanks for your time. You're welcome. Thank you.